Hello everybody, it's Dave from Arachnids doing a tarantula tour, I so to speak, I guess. Kind of how I have things set up. Um, I know people have asked for this in the past and I just never really did it, but we got a new shelving unit not too long ago. So uh, I, I put, put things on it one way and I decided I didn't like it that way and changed things around. So the light may be just a tad bit bright here and then we move it back here, but I'm holding the camera. So please forgive any unsteadiness. So the top shelf has most of, uh, mostly some juveniles, as you can see in these Tupperware containers in the back. Uh, Ceracopelma species Santa Canalita. There's a Nandu Trepepe. Um, Mylacia Doherty's uh, Polycuspolitis is in one as well. Uh, on the side here we have my female Terranichelis uh, Murinus from my Kumi locale. Um, one of my favorite spiders that I have. Um, and then a lot of juveniles here, as you can see, a Terranachila slapalala, a couple kilo brachy species, uh, Terranachila species arusha, um, Harpactera bobiana, even though I forgot the A when I made the sticker. See, look, idiot, Harpactera bobiana. What the hell is that, right? Uh, there's a GBB back there. She's a little female. And then some of these bigger enclosures here are uh, some uh, adults. There's an adult female. A uh, little caudal elbow pelosis in there, a davis penilorus, um, nandu carapoensis. Uh, the top enclosure is now empty. Um, that was my female um, Chilobrachis fimbriatus that had a wet molt uh, about three or four months ago. She finally passed away. Um, well, she struggled. I did the best I could with her, but I just couldn't get her to eat or do much of anything, intake water. There's also a uh, Calcodes back there, uh, female Calcodes that was paired. And we drop down to the middle shelf. These are all the exoterras that I have. Um, all of them are occupied, I believe, except for, uh, let's see, we have in the back, you'll have a uh, the tall ones, okay, like these ones here. So we have two Samopace Pulkers, um, this one here and the one behind it. This is a Iridopelma hirstum, I believe female, in this one. Uh, and this is the female Samopaeus armenia that I can't believe she hasn't molted yet. Uh, behind here is a Victoria, Samopaeus Victoria female. Excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Uh, and then the one is empty. And then we have there the smaller nanos, or the 8x8s, eight uh, my female Frixopelma pruians. Another Lapalala, uh, just a little bit... Uh, on the small side of juvenile and then behind this one this one's empty we're going to try and figure out who we want to put in there behind that one is my heart bacteria marxi which i'm going to move into uh, i'll show you probably something different um i'm debating because she is only a she only get about four inches uh, if you look over here you should look at the explosion of my hissing cockroaches that's the madagascar these things have gone insane in the last few months the babies everywhere um, down on this aisle, or yeah, aisle, it's a, now it's an aisle, not a shelf. Um, on this shelf here, these are all containers I got from Target. I really do enjoy these. They're great for like juvenile brachypelmas, afonopelmas, stuff like that. Um, you know, some mature males as well. Um, there's like that afonopelma calcodes male. Uh, that one passed away. Uh, this is time, you know, I mean, he, I'm not sure how quite he, long he lived, but he was here for, for many, many months, um, paired with my female. Could never get him to another spot. Uh, there's three Brachypelma babies, one female, two males in here. Uh, there's a male, Fonopelma calcodes right there. Uh, Grandma stole a pulchra, unsexed little guy. Um, probably about two inches, still hasn't, uh, it's been forever since it molted. And then... You know, there's my female Pelma sasme is also in one. If we move over here, this is the small, this is the one little shelf I have next to my bed. This is my female Lassiodora paraibana. She's roughly a little over six inches. Um, still got some growing to do. Uh, so she's kind of on a shelf by herself. And on the bottom, we have the two things of uh, roaches, uh, dubias and the red runners. Okay, sorry folks, I, my son came home. He's almost done with the police academy, so I wanted to chat with him. We're trying to figure out dinner plans for tonight, because it's just him and I. Now, anyway, um, 
these are um, Dreamco enclosures. There's three of them. They're side by sides. You can see there's a divider in them. They're made that way, two separate doors. I really, really like these for small uh, juvenile animals, uh, terrestrial. Uh, definitely, you don't want to get too crazy with uh, anything else. So you can see I'm going to have to do some cleaning with my Nandu there. We're getting some mold in both of them. Um, this is the one that I only had holes drilled in the back because I don't particularly care for those. And there's a reason for it. So in this, this is the Gramostola Grossa. And in the other one there used to be my Gramostola Acteon. Well, uh, these used to sit where the Lassiodora Paribana was. And our, our dog Bailey, she's a shepherd husky mix, had jumped up on the bed one day. Um, and she bumped the enclosures. And she didn't disturb them. Nothing fell or anything like that. But... Um, about a week later, you know, I was getting ready to feed and water them. And I realized that when she bumped the enclosures, that little white thing popped inside of the enclosure itself. So it left that whole section wide open. So of course, uh, I don't have a Gramostoloi Acteon anymore. And I don't never have come across it in the room uh, since it happened. What I will tell you is if you get the laser cut holes or just the holes in the back, I would strongly advise to add some extra holes um, on the sides and through the middle, the middle divider, I think, you know, so you get a little bit of a cross breeze. As you can see, I don't keep these guys very damp, but there is some um, mold growing in there. And it's, it's that pesky mold that's just hard to get rid of. It's usually around the outsides. Uh, it comes from condensation or any extra dampness, of course, uneaten prey, which... My nandus never do. Anything you throw in there, they eat, but you get the point. And then on the bottom there is the uh, Permictopis aranus and a Brachypelma vegans, not Brachypelma, little caudal vegans. Um, that is a male that came from a breeding loan of uh, my original mature male. So we're going to move on to uh, the other area of where I keep everything, and you'll see some of my crazy little... Uh, quirks I guess you could say. So over here on my dresser um, are some of the bigger critter keeper enclosures. Um, this is the Formictopus cancerides. This guy is going to move into one of those longer clear plastic enclosures over here. Uh, this is uh, in this enclosure here. Um, these are like the half rounds I call them. So they're kind of round but they're you know they're square on the back side there. Um, they're, they're okay in a, in a pinch you can use them, but I'm trying to, to eliminate these critter keepers. There's a couple reasons why. Um, stacking, it sucks because the added weight of the enclosures above them kind of cave in the tops of these uh, things. These ones are made a little bit better, uh, the ones with the black lids. These aren't um, critter keepers. They're Exoterra, I believe, or Zoomed or something different like that. They're a different type of, they come from the same line as like the breeder boxes. Um, I can't remember exactly who makes them. They were all given to me by my brother. So um, these ones are a little bit sturdier, these types of uh, lids. So stacking them isn't that big of a deal. But this is my female uh, Terranochelis murinus from Mozambique, uh, the only one that I have from Mozambique. She's absolutely stunning. She is going to go into one of those basketball enclosures um, so I can get rid of, I want to get rid of this enclosure, this enclosure, that enclosure, which is a male uh, Kilobrachys onesiensis. This enclosure, as you can see, is uh, my Discalis Burma chocolate female. This one also uh, is a female um, Kigoma, uh, Terranochelis from Kigoma. And this one down here is my Monocentropus belfori. I want to eliminate these critter keepers. And I have two extra of these, so I have to figure out which two spiders are going in those. And then we'll use the... Uh, other enclosures I'll show you in a bit, um, you know, longer ones from Hobby Lobby, like for the 124th scale and then 118th scale and then the big, huge uh, football enclosures. And, you know, of course, these are basketball, soccer ball enclosures. But we have the two heart packed here, Pulker Peas. She's uh, iffy. Um, she's not eating very well. We believe it or not, we I, I completely missed it that yesterday. So she had some water. Um, I think we're going to do some work with her after we're done here. See if I can, because she's not hiding anymore, which bothers me. Uh, generally, she's been hiding, and she's not now. She's out in the open all the time. So these little critters here came from Amy at uh, Bang Hub. Her and Quentin opened up their own business now. So we got some more Terranochelis species, a couple of Mikumis, a couple of Kigomas, and another Kenya. And then we got four 
um, Carabina Versicolor, a, a Avic Avic M6 or what we used to call Metallica. Uh, some past Cambridge Eye little guy because I don't have one, haven't had one for a while, and a couple P Gigases. Um, yeah, so a lot of fun there. 13 new little spiders came in last week. I'll show you the uh, sticker. And uh, please go check them out, Fang Hub. Just check them out on, uh, just go on Google and type in Fang Hub and click on their site. They got a lot of great stuff. Uh, she's importing some things and she's buying a lot of stuff to sell on the site. These three enclosures are empty. Uh, so we're going to try to utilize those two. Uh, and then I have another one of these laying around. So I want to utilize all of these. I do like these. Uh, the lids come off pretty easy. And um, they're really easy stackable easily stacked uh, this one's got some eggs in it from my uh, platymeris bigatatus or the white dotted assassin bug african assassin bug this is empty i'm not sure who i want to put in there i have a small uh, male i believe hmac and i have two avicularia marinase i believe one female one male so i might put the female in here and see what happens i'm not really quite sure uh, my little guy, my B classy male, and this is a um, Kigoma female, or male, sorry, male, this guy in here. Then we have the bigger enclosures, which has my Brachypelma homori, um, my Bamie, who was paired. I, I don't know what she's going to do. She's not looking any bigger than when I paired her. Um, my Gina Colada. Uh, up top is a mature male, Nandu Colorado Velosis, that I'm hoping to get out of here next week and send off for a pairing. Uh, my female erratum and a male homori. In here is a bunch of empty enclosures. You can see it's another one of those breeding boxes. These are empty. And that is my male Emilia. Then we have my small lats or the small uh, red runners. Uh, I ordered a thousand of them. There's probably about 800 of them left. Uh, fed, of course, fed them off. We have a female Gramistola pulcropes, um, little caudal vegans. Uh, U.F. Balestris campistratus and a, a suspected male for Mictopus, uh, I guess it would be green femur uh, gold carapace. I think that's what they're actually called. So here's one of my quirks. I, I like Oreos. I don't eat them a lot, but I like them opened. And I like them so they get soft. Uh, you know, I guess it's the same as dunking them in milk and I can't drink milk. So I don't know. I've always had a thing for the you know, my wife calls them stale, but I call them just soft. So that's one of my crazy quirks that I um, indulge myself in from time to time. Here's the little shelf that has usually, you know, some of the slings. These are all seven inch enclosures here. So the shelves are, you know, roughly about seven and a half inch spacing. Uh, my female Black Widow, uh, the El Mactans, the two Avicularia Marinase, the Maculata, and there is my um here's the one that doesn't want to build a trapdoor my t celadonia then we have uh, metallica p metallica we have a p poker um ooh, there's a smithy in that one what's in that one? Oh, that's my goodness i'm not sure i forget what's in there i think the scorpion the l uh friends were nary and then we have some zebra ice pods some small baseball cubes uh, with a couple brachypelmas and a fonopelma, Gramostola GBB, Dolicotheli diamantinensis, a couple uh, more baboons. Uh, of course, my, my coom, sorry about the glare. Uh, the mycumis, a kigoma, and then an H. pulcropes. Uh, so I have like five, four or five mycumis, five pulcropes, three or four kigomas, two tete. Um, the one Mozambique, three uh, Usambara, and three Kenya, I believe. And then these are the mini football helmet display cases. Um, I'm a Donald Duck fan. Uh, my wife saw this and picked it up for me. And I do like to indulge in a nip every now and then. This is some Southern Comfort uh, cherry. Uh, to be honest with you, I bought this bottle about four years ago. So uh, I use it like when I have colds or when I have... Uh, problem sleeping i'll just do a quick shot before i go to sleep and that kind of helps me and then we have all these guys here some uh, couple gramostola port terry female hobby a rosea male um 
couple baboons, my Namaquiensis male, um, Marshali female. There's a Kenya uh, suspected female, a Lugardi female. Uh, there's a classy female, two Emilia um, females. Um, see, we have the Homoyoma species blue male. We have an H. chilensis female. Oh uh, goodness, uh, there's a there's my one of the OBTs there, the orange highlights of your, you know, everybody loves that orange. I I just absolutely adore that orange coloration. And then these three guys here, which are a couple pulcher peas, and a, what do we have? Oh, my E. Rufusins. I love that little dude right there. You can see him. He was a product of uh, a breeding. Right there. He's the only one I have left. Uh, it was my male and Malik Brown's female. Uh, the first clutch uh, were no good, and then she double clutched and ended up having, I can't remember how many I ended up with, 18, I think. So the ones that I have worry about, there's, you know, there's always some in my collection that, you know, they're, they're acting oddly. This guy has been acting oddly. Um, a Herpactera pulcher piece, or yeah, uh, Namaquiensis male, sorry. And of course my, you know, this gal here, you know, she looks like she's curled, but she's not. That's just the way she sits, the way she's always sat since the time I got her in. But, you know, you just want to make sure that, you know, she's doing okay. Um, and again, she hides all the time. And for the last week and a half, she's been out. This poker piece female was paired. So I'm hoping, you know, she has gotten bigger. So I'm hoping that she has grabbed a uh, be a static. Uh, it was a male from um, Jonathan Hirschberg. I still have the male, actually. It's still alive, believe it or not. So that's kind of really it. I mean, my messy table, you know, it just I just kind of dump things on here. I do most of my work, so when I need to do something, I'll clean it off. I do have another one of these tables. I have a bunch of stickers on there that uh, need to remove a few and put a few new ones on. Um, but that's it. That's what I have, and that's how I keep them. And that's, you know, I mean, this whole shelf here is just a bunch of empty, empty enclosures. You know, they're just out of the way. Uh, and I have a couple of these to store all my bits and pieces. You know, you can see some candy canes in there. It's from the ones that the kids didn't eat. Not not my older kids, but my grandkids. Um, so I put them away because uh, they'd come over for dinner, and that's all they would want to eat is those things. So I kind of hit them. Um and, you know, your tool soldering, iron, and, and things of that nature. There's a Dremel drill in there somewhere. There's my microphone when I need to set up the mic and some other odds and ends. Oh, and then there's these little guys here. I think this is a little Parsons spider in this bigger thing here. And then there's a, uh, that's a Penelorus. And my little Albiceps, this one has some history because um, it had a really, really bad molt. So we're really trying to take care of this guy. Um, I don't believe his back legs work or its back legs work at all, but it has been eating, which is a good sign. And then there's a Uapalastris. You can see the little dot there. Looks like a little brown tan egg. That's the Uapalastris Weihenbergi. So that's my collection. And my intentions today are to feed some of this stuff. So I'm going to upload this video um, for you guys all to see and enjoy. And if you have any questions about anything, I'm sure there'll be some, you know, questions about substrate, some other stuff, um, you know, because people are going to say, oh, there's not enough in there and some of those. And, I, you know, you hear it all the time. Um, but, yeah, if you have any questions on how I keep things and why I eat Oreos that are soft, feel free to send me a message or say, hey, you know what? I eat those. I like to eat Oreos soft, too. So, you know, you find out new things about people all the time. So again, if you have any questions, let me know. We're going to do an enclosure type of uh, video coming up soon. I'm going to film some of these feedings. Uh, we're probably going to feed the ones that you saw in the beginning, the uh, softball enclosure spiders there. Maybe these guys here. And then um, all the slings. Um, there's a whole other container of slings. Maybe I should show you that and then we'll end on that note. Okay, so here, here we'll end up with this. this is, these are the slings that I have um, that are still in deli cups. These are like five ounces and two ounces, I believe. Uh, Dolicotheli diamantinensis, a couple Harpactera tigrina in there. There's a couple Gramostola pulcher peas, little guys in these small ones. A couple different Kilobrachy species. Um, there's a classy little guy there, Brachypum classy. 
Um, my goodness, I can't remember what's left in all this stuff. Oh, there's an Imira in here, a uh, Ceratajaris Darlingi also in there. Uh, a lot of these moved out of there, like these Eudamans um, and the Sinanathus. Uh, we just recently moved those out of there into these, so um, to, to free up some space for all those other ones that I got. I wanted to, you know, utilize the rest of these. Now I think I have all the softball enclosures that I have are filled. Now, I really do like these for animals that get up to about, you know, two inches. Once you get to about two inches, like this one here. This is the species of Rusha. Um, she's ready to move. She's a confirmed female. So, you know, when you get to that point where you're actually visibly able to confirm them without much help from a microscope, um, you know, it's time for them to move. Even though that it looks like she still has a lot of space. You know, I mean, she really does. She, she looks a lot smaller or bigger than what she is because of the enclosure size. So we're probably going to move her into one of those. And she'll be the first baboon that I try out in one of those and see how that works out. There's my dog barking. Don't know why. She hardly ever barks. And then we got to fill this one, of course. So we'll do all that stuff and we'll update the stuff. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions on anything, please feel, feel, feel free to uh, message me. You know, we have a lot of enclosures here to fill. You know, we got one of these Zilla things. Uh, we got three of these bigger enclosures. Uh, we got two more of those you got a bunch of enclosures but i got enclosures all over the place so what i want to try and do is utilize more of those with some of the smaller juveniles in here um so that they're more clear and then just use these as just your uh, premature males uh, that you don't want to give too much space to although i only have one mature male which is that nandu and he's going out anyway so yeah Okay, well, I said I was going to stop. Now I'm going to stop. So have a great day. Happy keeping. And don't forget to come and check us out on the Tarantula Community on Facebook. And don't forget to go see Amy and Quentin on fanghub.com. See you guys later.